we offer these masks for peace in the world, peace in our country, Nigeria, peace in our homes. We pray for your intentions. We ask God to grant your heart desires and to visit the various points of need. And for the sick, may He grant healing to them through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, my dear friends in Christ. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us go to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary of Virgin. brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May your mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those who set firm on the foundation of your love. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, who leads and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. In those days, Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the secretary came to the king and reported to the king, your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of the workmen who have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Then Shaphan the secretary told the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book and Shaphan read it before the king. And when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and Ahikam the son of Shaphan, and Akbor the son of Milkiah, and Shaphan the secretary, and Isaiah the king's servant, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the hearts of this book that has been found, for great is the work of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning us. Then the king sent, and all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem were gathered to him. And the king went up to the house of the Lord, and with him all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests and the prophets, all the people, both small and great. And he read it in their hearing, 
all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his covenant and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people joined in the covenant. The words of the Lord. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes. Lord, teach me the way of your statutes. Turn my 
ai khom ghê dĩ ngọn vò ni chi i yo we Abide in me, and I in you, says the Lord. He who abides in me bears much fruit. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits, are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? So every sound tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears evil fruit. Nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. We thank God for the grace of a new day. We thank Him for His mercy and protection. As we begin this new day, we ask Him to come to be with us, to strengthen us, and to help us to identify those false and bad people in our lives so that we can embrace the good ones who bear fruits and fruits that are useful. Today, my dear friends, Jesus gives his disciples a warning against false prophets and a test for unmasking them. And he said, beware of false prophets. First of all, a true prophet is someone who speaks on behalf of God. Why a false prophet claims, is someone who claims to speak on behalf of God, but in reality, he is not. And so Jesus tells his disciples today and tells all of us today to beware of these people. Given what Jesus just said about entering through the narrow door, the narrow gate, in this same gospel in verse 13, it is a natural or it is natural to assume that false prophets would encourage you or encourage us to enter the wide gate leading to destruction. So he wants us to be on the outlook for them. 
and do not listen to what they say to us. Jesus warns that these false prophets will appear innocent. They will appear harmless. They will come to you in sheep clothing. Their appearance is deceptive and their effect is so, so deadly. And inwardly, they are ravenous wolves, as Jesus, as Jesus put it in the gospel today. So these false prophets are looking out to take advantage of you. They will destroy you and they will consume your soul to get what they want. The scripture says, do not let them have this opportunity in your lives. Jesus now gives us a clue on how to identify and to recognize these false prophets by using a clear parable of a tree and its fruit. He says, a good tree bears good fruit and a bad one bears bad fruit. There is no way that a good tree will bear bad fruit. And there is no way that an evil tree will bear good fruit. So he gives us a clue to identify some of these. And to recognize false prophets, the scripture says that his disciples will know them by their fruits. Fruit is here is used as a metaphor for their works or for what they produce. It refers to what comes out of their lives. They may be fruit of immorality, they may be fruit of a watered down doctrine or a fruit leading people to worship modern day idols like money, like power, like courtism, like kidnapping, like politics to mention but a few. So they may even use religion sometimes to get into political positions. You will now you will know them because even when they seem to preach well, their actions always and constantly will betray them. Their agenda will always be their own private one and not the glory of God. So brothers and sisters, even when these false prophets appear like you, talk like you, pretend to be like you, they are not like you. Glory to Jesus. So therefore, it is very important for us to pay attention to their works. You will know them by their fruits. If their works are bad, they do not represent God. So with this, you can know them. So Jesus continues with a straightforward statement when he says, So every good tree bears good fruits, but the bad tree bears bad fruits. The good and bad trees represent the good and bad people in our midst, more especially true prophets and false prophets. Good men and good prophets produce good fruits. They come to us with a good intention. They come to us with the intention of leading us to eternity. But the bad people will come to us with a bad intention of leading us to a road to destruction where we will be lost forever. So we have to beware of these people. And so Jesus has said an inverse of this truth. He says a good tree cannot produce bad fruits, nor can a bad tree produce good fruits. And then he adds again that every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. This remark informs his disciples and informs all of us that God will surely deal with false prophets. He will deal with such bad people who come to snatch the kingdom away from us. They will not get away with their lives. God will not allow them to spoil his own orchard. And he won't even let them continue to take up space in his garden. And so he will cut them down and throw them into the fire of his judgment. And so brothers and sisters, as we continue our reflection today on the warning Jesus gives us today to beware of false prophets who are constantly leading us to destruction, let us ask God for the grace 
to be able to identify these false prophets so that we too we do not perish with them. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Your sacrifice of mine may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the hands for the grace and glory of the Spirit. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by each action we may make offerings of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is free, right, and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions, adores, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with us in humble praise as we acclaim.
are indeed the holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them that did you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willing into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the tallies and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have had us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Ignatius, our Archbishop, Anselm, the Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed Apostles, Jude, and Anthony Mary Claret, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co earth eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. I see for you those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, say the apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Renewed and nourished, great body and precious love of you. We ask of your mercy that what we constant devotion to be with you. May the good and all faithful God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace. The mass is sandwich.